Well, I hope you had a wonderful new year. Uh, we want to continue today recognizing that it's not resolutions that's going to get us uh, into heaven and, and uh, we can't get into heaven by works either one. But one thing I do hope that you'll remember as we start this new year is that God desires for us to let the word of God mold us and not the world to mold us. And I say that even though I've said it a number of times last year to say to you that uh, it's wonderful to learn all about the scriptures. Uh, the scribes and the Pharisees were experts in the scriptures. Uh, many seminary professors are experts in the scriptures. They know the history, the geography. They know the customs and the times. But they don't apply God's word to their lives. Uh, and today, in event number 26, at Capernaum in AD 28, we find that illustrated quite well. It's found in Matthew 12, beginning at verse 46, found in Mark verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 31 and following, and Luke chapter 8 and verse 19 and following. And I've taken all three and studied them. And we have a situation where multitudes are still coming to Jesus, both for teaching and for healing. Uh, he's back at Capernaum. The house is full, so much so that it tells us in Luke that his mother and his brothers are unable to get to him. So they send a messenger to Jesus to say, we want to talk to you. And he says out loud, because it's recorded here for us, who is my mother and brothers? And after a pause, he motions out at the disciples that have gathered and filled the room. Behold, my mothers and my brothers. Uh, and then he explains that. He says, whoever will uh, does the will of my father, and he says in heaven so that they not think it's Joseph, uh, whoever does the will of my father, and, he in, and the other two uh, verses uh, from the other two scriptures, he says the will of God, or hears the word of God and does it, those are my mother and my brothers. So it really emphasizes what I've been trying to teach, and that is God doesn't desire our sacrifice. Uh, he just doesn't desire our academics. But what he desires is whatever he reveals to us through his word, that we would apply it to our lives and be obedient to do what it says to do. Uh, and so uh, it's a wonderful illustration of what I've been teaching for a long time, and that is that applying the scriptures to our lives and allowing God to mold us through his word is much more what he wants from us than the greatest knowledge of the scriptures, uh, ge geographics, times, kings, memorization of scripture. All of that is good. It, it really helps us to understand the scriptures. But what he really wants is he wants obedience to the scriptures. He wants us to allow the word of God to mold us and not the world, the world, and not, not the world to mold us, but the word to mold us. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day. Well, many people say, I believe there's a God or I believe there's a supernatural power. And yet we have the Bible, which has hundreds of prophecies and fulfillments of historical events that are well documented. Hundreds and hundreds of evidences that there is a God. Hundreds of evidences that Jesus lived, died, and rose again. Many times even personal experiences which have shown someone uh, that there is a Jesus that he did die for their sins and he demonstrated it to them in their lives and for a while they believed it and then they kind of fell away. What would it take? How many prophecies and how many fulfillments? Uh, how, how much evidence would you need before you come away from just saying, I believe there's a God and entering into a personal relationship with Christ? 
He said, we're all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. That's demonstrated every day, we're all sinners. And he demonstrated clearly, and there's lots of historical evidence that he lived, he died, and he rose again to prove he has power over death. Uh, the universe declares his glory, and yet still some don't believe. Uh, it's one thing to say that uh, I believe because I have a religion, I have a faith, but does that faith and that religion match up with the scripture? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. Couldn't be more specific than that, could it? I would challenge you that if you're in doubt about the existence of God and about how Jesus died for your sins, that you get some of the apologetic books that have been written by very, very intelligent people. People that have studied, people that have come to faith because they studied, and people that believe that Jesus is a personal savior. No, it's not just for poor people, it's not just for ignorant people, it's for everyone that it will believe by faith that Jesus died for their sins. And that's my thought. God bless you and have a great day.